Have you ever considered that the silver bullet guru who says this is how to grow your business online perhaps doesn't quite get your business? Are you a small business owner that's perhaps been fleeced by a few agencies and given you promises without the return? Well, this is what Paul Fernandez is going to help us with today. How to grow your business online. He's from the Growth Guys. Uh, Paul, hello. And how are you today? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, really good. Really good. Good. Tired, tired. But yeah, good. <laughs> Well, you're busy making people grow, which, uh, which gives you lots of stress and consternation. But uh, we're here today to talk about growing our businesses online, specifically for the, you know, the business owner that's perhaps doing it themselves uh, and not quite certain of exactly the right approach to take. Uh, so a few quick questions just to get ourselves uh, uh, moving. I understand that you've got something called the Grow Better methodology, uh, Paul, which is going to help us go from few likes, clicks and shares to something that's better than that. What does that entail? Yeah, so the Grow Better methodology is a seven step process to growing a business online uh, using online tactics, cross marketing, uh, cross platform marketing techniques. So it's plan, we've got to, sorry, we've got to uncover first, uncover everything, then plan, build, launch, review, very important step is the review because that's the data-driven uh, decisions that we're going to make. Optimize and scale. So any kind of optimizations that are made are going to be made with the view of scaling that specific campaign. Um, it's, it's, it's all part and parcel. It might sound obvious, but it's not being put in this framework before. And it's, it's, it's a really sort of like linear way of trying to sort of streamline this process. As I said before, the, the review uh, step of that process is super super important because that's the bit where we either go back a step or we go to optimize and it's it, it's really pivotal in in the whole uh marketing journey really when we're when we're growing businesses online uh certainly yeah okay so lots of business owners will have their website spend a lot of money getting it developed and getting it online and working on the content and then you kind of sit back and expect miracles to happen and the phone to ring and the emails to start pinging but it, it it doesn't happen that way so why why is that happening Paul what what's the tricks that they're missing digital assets for some businesses just are not fit for purpose they will have a website created which is acting just as a shop window they won't have the analytics at the background and we hear so many times actually oh I don't need that I don't need that well how how are you tracking your progress how are you looking you know, when things are going well, they're going well and you don't really care what's going on. But when things do go wrong and, you know, external circumstances like we've all been through over the last year, when things like that hit and bring your business down to sort of rock bottom and you're wondering how to bring that back up again, you're going to be looking at the analytics going, well, how many conversions did we get in this month? What was the reason for that? How much did we spend to acquire a customer? What was the cost per click? What did we do? What, you know, what creative was the best performing? You've got to be looking at the analytics. So therefore, you've got to make the digital assets fit for purpose, tagging it up correctly. Make sure that your meta tags are still, it's still relevant. You need to make sure that everything is relevant on your, on your landing pages. Making sure that you're hooked up to Google Console. Make sure that Google knows who you are. You know, it's the biggest search engine in the world. And if they don't know who you are, you haven't got Cat and L's chance. You know, Google are rolling out things like Google Local, where you can appear in local listings, but you've got to have a wider audience as well, just to for that visibility and that that authority. But yeah, you've got to make sure that your digital assets are fit for purpose, and you've got to understand the data, although even on a small scale, just so that you know what's working. So when things do go wrong, you can bring it back up. Wow, <laughs> that's like two minutes of gold just in that little bit there of all the things that we should be doing and it just shows how fast paced this industry is in terms of what's changing and what's coming down the line uh, no wonder we get to, we get lost in that so the last 12 months is this a real case of sales and marketing really begin to intertwine with each other to make sure that marketing can give sales what they're looking for but equally sales can report back to marketing what's working and what's not yeah, it's, it's got to be a two-way conversation. And in fact, actually, I spoke about this recently, but the line between sales and marketing, I believe, doesn't exist anymore. It's a, they're part and parcel of the same thing. And it's actually something that the hospitality industry has done for a long time, where they've combined the two departments as one because they are part and parcel of the same thing. 
you need to be able to market yourself. Actually, the marketing is probably three quarters of the sales process anyway. You know, you're nurturing potential clients with digital techniques like retargeting, giving them value, free value to download, you know, all sorts of things. And then the sales process, it might sound easy, but it's not. It's getting them over the line. You know, I was once told, actually, that, you know, my job was basically for a five minute phone call a day. That's what I was getting paid for a five minute phone call a day of getting a booking over the line. And that's kind of like how sales works. You, 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 you pinpoint all of that energy into that phone call in appointment setting, confirming a booking, getting a proposal over the line, getting a contract signed, whatever. The, the line doesn't exist anymore. Marketing is a way for sales to uh, happen and sales is a way to validate the marketing. That's pretty much it. So marketing kind of throw the bait out there and they've put it in the right pond where the fish are. And then your job as a salesperson is to is to land it and pull it in and get it in the boat. It, 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Offer offer them the outcome. It's, you know, the marketing has been selling the dream for so long. You know, it could be a gestation period of six, 12 months, 18 months, whatever it is, you know, and then you've got to offer that that outcome at the end. That's the that's the sales job. Offer the outcome, get it over the line. Uh, but make sure it's ethical. Obviously, <laughs> don't be selling them false promises. But yeah, absolutely. So back on those false promises. So we we see a lot about you know Gar Grant Cardone or Gary V. Here's the way to suddenly triple X or ten X or seven figure your business. Uh, what are your? I don't want to be too contentious, but is that message going to be right for everybody? It's not helpful. It's really not helpful. Um, it's definitely not going to be right for everybody because they haven't been through the same process as these people. Grant Cardone, Gary V, you know, Neil Patel, Eric Sue, they're all big marketers who have built their, you know, they've built their credentials. They've built, you know, they've spent years and years testing. And I always bring it back to the analogy of like a musician. You know, it's, you, you know you're, you're hiring a musician and they want 200 pounds for the night. And you go, I'm not paying that. It's too much. It's like, actually, you're, paying, you're not just paying them for the night, but you're paying them for the 15 years that they've taken to, uh, you know, to, 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 to master their craft. And that's what these guys have done. But these guys offering the message of 10xing your business using this one silver bullet method, I'm sorry, it's not helpful. I don't think it is. I think people, you need current advice, current about what's working right now but also to stay ahead of the curve, what's possibly on the horizon, looking at big tech roadmaps as well, like Facebook, Google, you know, what are these, what are these companies doing in the future? What do we anticipate is going to happen? And it's actually easily found online about what their roadmaps are. How can you anticipate what these changes are going to make? iOS, for instance, the updates with 14 and 14.5, people knew they were coming. They didn't prepare for it at all. Luckily, we, we, we had a, enough knowledge about what was going to happen. And when it did, there was just a couple of things we didn't know about and we could easily learn them. OK, so uh, Mr. Paul Fernandez, silver bullet in gun. Uh, tell me authentically how you've managed to transform uh, a current business in terms of uh, let's put your money where your mouth is, lad. And, uh, and <laughs> tell us, about, uh, tell us about, about somebody you're helping grow at the moment. E, e, I've gone, I was going to go all Yorkshire then. Um, <laughs> well, we, we've got it. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> uh, we um, flat cap and whip it. Yeah, uh, we've got a hotel client down in the uh, in the Midlands, and they came to us in in really ample time. Hospitality for you know throughout COVID has been horrific, and you know we've seen some fantastic businesses go under and really suffer. But these guys, they pivoted. They pivoted early. They, they, they knew their market, they knew where they wanted to go, and they came to us in good time with good digital assets that were ready to be sort of like supercharged, if you will, to support the reopening of their hotel. So it's not a, it wasn't a case of like, right, open the doors again, we can accept bookings. They needed to get out there again, regardless of their credentials and things, they needed to get out there and secure bookings. And they were... You know, they, they pivoted during COVID by delivering meals and things like that. But we actually changed. We, we managed to sort of shift the balance of that and get them bookings, you know, straight in from day one. You know, so they were well prepared and we were well prepared with them because of their preparation. So I can't take we can't take all the credit because the client was really collaborative, transparent, and they were immersed in their business. And we as a part, you know, as a part of that became immersed with them 
and they're receiving an ROI now of it's it's in the hundreds. Like it's in the hundreds now. For every pound they're spending on advertising, they are getting hundreds back. It's 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 actually really nice to see. Now, some might say that that's just luck or that's just oh well, that's just because everyone's desperate to get away. Yeah, partly true. But if they didn't prepare for it, they would have failed. So it's it's it you know you could you could look at it either way. It's like you know why are these guys doing so well, but then some other hotels maybe aren't. So, yeah, this particular client, this hotel client, yeah, they're fantastic, and you know they're they're gracious to work with as well, and they're just fantastically into their business, and it makes it a joy to do that. But yeah, hundreds in ROI, and it's just an amazing project to work on. Good. Well, I think that's having the mindset to be in a, in an evolving sort of species kind of way, and that. I call it sometimes with my clients a binocular session where literally you come come out of the cornfield with your binoculars on virtually and you kind of look around and think, <laughs> I've just come from there. I'm going that way. Uh, and what does the future look like? All right, that's where we're going to go. And we now need to do A, B, C, D, E to get ready for that particular point. Because 100%. before the future comes, you've got to prepare for what's down the line. And I I went to a restaurant last Friday. And, and first of all, you know, this is the first Friday after lockdown. Uh, and so much anticipation. First of all, I couldn't book online because, you know, you, they, you, then you ring up and they say, oh, well, you know, the table plan's really complicated. We have to work out table six. It's going to be in for an hour and a half. And then, you know, we kind of rub it out and then put the next one in. And I'm thinking, oh, surely not. We've had five months to get ready for this particular point. Mm -hmm. And they've not opened table and other things that exist. And then I'm sat down and they're advertising the app. And... Um, you know, nobody it tells me how to use the app or even on checkout, I give them the bill and they don't talk about the app for 15% return. So yeah, they were full that night, but in three months down the line, when all this kind of Ferrari of booking tables again goes, which of the restaurants are gonna still be busy? It's the ones that have evolved and adapted and embraced this online technology that I think is now all over us. And we've become so um, expectant of, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, it's it's awful to hear that kind of story. You know, where restaurants aren't being well prepared for for the reopening. But you know, they, they'll they'll be lost amongst the chaos for a little while, and then, like you say, when things do calm down and they you know they need bookings in November prior to the Christmas rush and what have you, then you know they're, they're not going to be there because they've they've lost that visibility. They've lost that you know customer retention because. The, the customers had a bad experience when they, you know, like yourself, you know, had a bad experience with not being told about any discounts that they might have been eligible for and, you know, being made to go look for it rather than being presented with these mm -hmm. kind of uh, enticing offers. Yeah. OK, so it, just in terms of growth online, is it all about Facebook ads for you and LinkedIn sponsored um, activity? No, not at all. It's, it's about the marketing mix. You've got to You've got to look at everything and wonder what's going to work for you. You've got to hypothesize, of course you have. You've got to have a decent content strategy. You've got to have a decent digital asset or set of digital assets that you can rely on. But people rely on Google ads, people rely on Facebook ads, people rely on YouTube, people rely on LinkedIn, Reddit, other other channels that you can you can advertise on and grow your business through. But it's purely got to work for you. What will work for me will not work for someone else. What will work for that hotel client of ours will not work for another hotel client. It's got, it's got to be bespoke and it's got to work for you, but it's all, it's, it's, you've got to be planning that journey from beginning to end and understand it. The channel is, a, the channels are just a means to an end. You've got to have the infrastructure in place and the, the, the value proposition to, to know what you're going out for. Okay. And then what about for you, just the use of good old everyday email, is that still a good growth tactic for companies to be using? Yeah, absolutely. If it's done correctly. I think, you know, there are sort of semi-automated methods that you can use, um, you know, in terms of like, you know, people's, some people's emails are public domain. You can get them quite easily. I think it's just about getting to know that person before you email them. And if you are emailing them cold, um, then, you know, make sure you're, you know, not being too pushy, not being too pitchy. You know, there's nothing wrong with pitching. That's what salespeople are meant to do. Business development managers, that's what they're meant to do. But, you know, warm up the oven before you stick in the turkey type thing. You know, it's, you've got to really warm the, the prospect up, give them some value, give them a, you know, 
like we we use scorecards they're a really good way of getting people to get to know you and get to you know validate themselves and you get to pre-qualify them as well before you decide whether or not you're going to pursue them yeah no i i'm fully embracing the scorecard i know it's something that's part of your own uh, brand in terms of working with uh, daniel Priestley. Uh, i've jumped into the scorecard uh, system myself we use a cold and then we use a warm and then we actually use it as part of our own uh, success criteria to start working with the clients and then three months down the line we show them where they've got to from where they were with the scorecard and it just helps me say well this is where we were this is where we are now look at the growth and the learning and the mindset shifts that we've managed to achieve in in that space of time brilliant so you've got yeah. a growth scorecard i think on your website i've seen it today uh, so what, what yeah. does that entail so that's um, what's your digital growth score. And that's, uh, I think it's about 15 and fifteen to 20 questions to sort of really get on a granular level as to what you're, what you're doing. You know, you, have you been running campaigns for 90 days? Do you know how much you're willing to pay for an acquisition? You know, all those kind of things. It's just going on a more granular detail. So it allows me to understand people who are potentially interested in working with us. But at the end, you get a, a really nice detailed report, actually of some, some, some hints and tips and hopefully some valuable insights of how to then go on and, you know, grow your business if you are deciding to, you know, do it yourself or go in with a, another partner or even for your marketing department. Yeah, so there's some nice value hopefully at the end there. Good, and that's a free, takes you how long, how many, couple of minutes or something? Yeah, two minutes, can't, can't take you any longer than that. If you, if you know, you can get it done in two minutes. If you don't know some things, it could take you a little bit longer. All right, a little bit of a curious question for you, Paul. Uh, when somebody rings you and says, and you say, hi, Paul Fernandez, Growth Guys, and they say, oh, hello, can I speak to the person responsible for, how does that make you feel? Uh, I'm indifferent, really, because we're not a massive team, so it's bound to be me in some capacity. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm bound to be responsible for something that's happened. So, yeah, I'm, I'm indifferent. It doesn't make me feel nervous at all, or, you know, if that's what maybe you were implying. But, yeah, I don't, I don't feel anything really i'm just waiting to hear who's on the end of the phone is there no aspect of uh, frustration in that is that the best they could do when they ring you and say can i ring the person responsible for on the basis that your information is clearly in the public domain you can go on your site and say meet the team and it clearly says carl paul and i think sarah is that right uh liberty liberty yeah it's sarah, sarah's my wife <laughs> okay if she wasn't on the first she wasn't on the website no, no, no. is there, is there any aspect yet. of you that sort of goes oh come on you know you can work harder than that surely oh i see what you mean right in, in that context uh, you know yeah i mean uh, i again i'm indifferent it's just you know if they, if they haven't taken the time to to, to to do that there's only really one way that conversation is going to go but i won't i won't sort of re rebuttal back really i don't think you're a nice growth guy, aren't you? I uh, just, you know, I think if that was me on the other end of the phone without, you know, adequate training, I'd, I'd like to think someone might be nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're coming out of our lockdown now. We can hopefully see the, uh, the, the train leaving the station. Uh, what are your exciting things that you're looking forward to doing that you really haven't had a chance to do in the last, what, 15, 16 months, Paul? A real in-person networking event. Looking forward to that. Um, I'm looking forward to, on the horizon, potentially a few speaking gigs. So just to be in front of people and to be doing this, but in, in person will be nice. And just a nice frosty beer, I think. I haven't really had a chance to do that. So looking forward to that. Very good. And looking backwards, uh, what one, one word would kind of sum up your own learnings of the, the lockdown from a from a personal business owner's perspective learn and pivot quickly <laughs> pivot quickly because that's you know the, you, you don't have much time things uh, you've, you've maybe got like a month or two maximum before you, it's already outdated so try and stay ahead of the curve if you can but if you can't react if you if you think something's coming and it happens react quickly because you, you're not going to have much time. Yeah, no, I love that adage of uh, fail, but fail quickly. Uh, yeah. And then learn from it and, and change and evolve quickly. Good. So, let me just put your uh, details up here so that if people want to go and find your website, go and do the scorecard, uh, then they can do that uh, quickly without effort. Uh, and 
there we are. So anybody on the podcast today who can't see this, it's Paul Fernandez at The Growth Guys and it's paul at thegrowthguys.co.uk. Uh, telephone number you can find on the website, but it's thegrowthguys.co.uk. And if you're looking for Paul on LinkedIn, it's paul-a-fernandez with a Z at the end. Spanish, not Portuguese. <laughs> Well, uh, you can go to Portugal uh, on holiday at the moment and maybe Spain in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and then hopefully after that, you can go to where my background is, which is the good old Italian Amalfi uh, Coast. Uh, and this is Ravello. Paul, Amazing. anything else today that you want to share? Not really, no. <laughs> been a I'm going to go get a drink. <laughs> I've learned so much. I'm going to go back and find that little sort of two minute piece of Google and uh, Google local and all, everything else. And I might just do a little bit about that myself tonight with my website. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, mate.